Dronescaping Britain presents 20 Fascinating Hill Forts of West Wales. Welcome to Dronescaping Britain's Hill Forts of West Wales. In this final episode of the series, Is Garn Goth Older Than We Thought? We take a look at an exciting hypothesis by Martin Price. Now, let's consider the presence of Neolithic megastructures in Wales. Finally, we ask, why choose to build communities at such elevated locations, risking exposure to harsh weather? If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, share, subscribe or click the bell notification icon to be notified when the next episode is posted. Although Garn Goch is officially identified as an Iron Age hill fort, this interpretation is challenged by local resident and historian Martin Price, who offers an intriguing alternative for its origins. He presents evidence to suggest this hill fort is perhaps up to 3,000 years older than is currently thought and its purpose was religious rather than military. Investigating how Garn Goch became identified as an Iron Age fort, Martin discovered that nearly 50 years ago, A. H. A. Hogg, the undisputed expert on Welsh Iron Age forts, wrote a short report describing Garn Goch as puzzling, anomalous and impossible to prove. Evidently, the expert was not convinced. Martin's observations brought him to the conclusion that Garn Goch resembles an early religious construction more than a military one. He considered other ages for Garn Goch in prehistory and the Neolithic came into focus. Neolithic ancestral worship appears to associate stone with death and there are many examples of Neolithic sacred spaces in South Wales surrounded by stones. Focusing on Garn Goch's long cairn, Martin demonstrates that it is not unique, but belongs to a series of long cairns stretching to the Cotswolds. Excavations have confirmed that these cairns are definitively Neolithic. If, as Martin postulates, Garn Goch's purpose was religious, it may represent a major Neolithic ritual and festival site, its large size capable of accommodating thousands of visitors or pilgrims. It may seem unrealistic that large amounts of people once gathered in the middle of nowhere, but Professor Mike Parker Pearson's investigation into Neolithic history reveals further insight. In his 2021 TV broadcast called The Lost Circle Revealed, Parker Pearson demonstrated that some of the blue stones found at Stonehenge Stone Circle were quarried in Pembrokeshire on the northern Priscilla Hills adding that there is no doubt that Pembrokeshire was one of the great religious and political centres of Neolithic Britain. Thus, according to Martin, it is absolutely plausible that thousands of people once travelled long distances to South Wales and Garn Goch was not an isolated site in the middle of nowhere. Being positioned on the Ridgeway, it must have been a Camino to one of the most sacred sites in Neolithic Britain. It was most probably a destination in its own right, as well as being a way station to Pembrokeshire. Garn Goch, perhaps the largest ancient stone monument in Britain, deserves thorough research. Cadu recognises this site to be of prehistoric importance, with remains worth excavating. And Divid Archaeological Trust is now committed to excavation. The question needs answering. Is Garn Goch merely one of nearly 700 Iron Age hill forts in Wales? Or is it a large and unique Neolithic religious site that Wales should be proud of? Martin's investigations seem convincing. Perhaps he is right. Maybe Garn Goch evolved to become an Iron Age hill fort. Only serious archaeology can provide indisputable evidence and Martin says his next task is to try and generate funding for archaeological investigation. 
For further information about this fascinating site, you can visit the dedicated website at garngoch.org. Unveiling the mysteries of Garn Gogh and the Neolithic context. Can Garn Gogh be compared to any other Neolithic site in the area? Evidence exists that several hill forts have origins in the Bronze Age and even the Neolithic period, so it is worth examining Martin's hypothesis regarding the exceptionally early construction date of 3000 to 3600 BCE for Agaia Vaua at Garn Gogh. Even if built over an earlier settlement, Agaia Vaua's construction predates the massive Neolithic enclosure at Hindwell, situated in the Walton Basin, a mountain valley in East Wales. Hindwell is dated to around 2700 BCE, a few hundred years later than Agaia Vaua, and perhaps could be considered a northern outpost of the Cotswold group of Longbarrows. It was probably a three days walk between these two sites. Some of these Neolithic enclosures differ significantly in that Agaia Vaua was built of stone and situated atop of a promontory, while Hindwell, in a valley bottom, was constructed of wood. Construction differences may be explained by Mike Parker Pearson's proposal that sites constructed with wood represented sanctuaries of the living, while stone-built enclosures represented the ancestors. Hindwell is comparable in size to Agawa Vaua. At Hindwell, an immense wooden palisade consisting of massive oak posts required much effort and investment to build. Yet the smaller entrances indicate controlled access, suggesting a ceremonial site for ritual or religious purposes, rather than for defence. Other similarities between Garn Gogh and Hindwell seem to be the inclusion of large pools once situated within both enclosures. Also, both enclosures appear to have once been associated with nearby springs and watercourses. This connection with water may suggest a key feature, possibly for a ritualised purpose. Like Agaia Vaua, Hindwell's Bronze Age descendants continued to occupy the area. Bronze Age people at Hindwell built two round barrows within the area of the Palisade and many more nearby. Later, in the Iron Age, folk moved away from the valley floor and onto nearby promontories overlooking the former Palisade. Perhaps they relocated to the Burfa Bank Hill Fort a mile to the east or other nearby sites. The Romans regarded the significance of both Hindwell and Gongoch to their local area, building roads and a fort on Hindwell and near Gongoch in the valley below. Later still, medieval castles were constructed nearby, as in the case of Gongoch. Two Motten Bailey castles built by the Normans were also built nearby to Hindwell. Furthermore, the Walton Basin in which Hindwell is situated has several other large enclosures nearby with other tumuli and two cursus monuments in the vicinity. In comparison, Garn Gogh has a cluster of three enclosures with extensions and also hosts large Neolithic and Bronze Age cairns. Is this all just a coincidence? Let us know what you think in the comments below. Choosing to position Iron Age enclosures at high windswept locations, often lacking water sources, is also puzzling. The climate may have been more favourable than at present, but there are other reasons to consider. Valleys in an unmanaged landscape may have seen unpredictable flooding and harboured dangerous animals in dense vegetation. 
as well as waterborne diseases such as malaria. Hill forts could have provided safety for both livestock and vulnerable people against the potential threat of predators and raiders and a lofty position would also definitely have allowed some monitoring of the surrounding area. Most Welsh hill forts seem to have access to water. Yet this may not be true for some located in the south and east of Britain. Some of these forts may have been temporary or seasonal, used by herders during specific periods. Perhaps over time the water table decreased or there was a reliance on carrying water from nearby valleys. Rainwater collection through buckets and pits provide another potential solution. Ultimately, the true purpose of these iconic structures remains a mystery. They could have served various functions. For example, coastal forts could offer additional security against raiders. The clustered housing, identified from LIDAR studies, may indicate the need for safety, expanding families or close community. Furthermore, the clustered roundhouses within these settlements likely maximised daylight, an advantage for drying thatched roofs and maintaining hygienic conditions. With over 4,000 of these ancient sentinels scattered across Britain, they represent the ingenuity and legacy of our ancestors. However, the reasons behind their construction and use remains the subject of exploration and debate. We hope you've enjoyed this series. Please like and subscribe, comment or hit the bell notification icon. We hope we'll see you again soon.